Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. It is the time of the month for my monthly palette rankings. So these are all of the palettes that I tried in the month of March. I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best. So if you want to see what comes out on top, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys, particularly eyeshadows, which is why we have a whole series on ranking monthly eyeshadow palettes that I try. So we tried a lot in the month of March, about 14 palettes. Let me double check on that one. Yeah, 14 palettes, oh my. Um, <laughs> Anyways, if you aren't aware of the series or anything like that, I always do this kind of around the middle of the next month so that I still have some time to play with the palettes into the next month. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Anyways, we're going to start off with number 14. Now, this is from ZC Cosmetics, and this last month I did a sponsorship with ZC. So, they sent me a lot of palettes, so I feel like the majority of this video is about ZC Cosmetics. They take over like half of the palettes, so you'll see a lot of them weaving in and out. Anyways, number 14 is going to be the Cobra palette. This was in collaboration with the British Museum, and what I loved about ZC so much is their packaging and their corresponding color story, and I just really love the marketing of the brand overall. At the time that I did this sponsorship, I actually hadn't tried this palette yet. There were so many palettes that they sent me, I couldn't try every single one. This is the only palette from the brand that has disappointed me. So unfortunately, I couldn't let you guys know in the sponsorship, but I'm coming back now to let you know that this one is just not very good. I don't get much color and pigmentation from these when I tried to use it. It's just kind of a not very good palette. It's cheap. I mean, the quality on this is definitely cheap to me. And unfortunately, this one it did not work out for me. Now, if you are somebody who does have an appreciation, you know, for the Egyptian collection from ZC and also you like more light washes of neutrals, something very, very natural, you might actually like these because these aren't hard to work with. You just can't really get them to show up like up to what I personally prefer. This shade is awesome though. They have a really great shimmer formula. Uh, but this was definitely the worst one of the ZC collection. Moving on to number 13. From this point on, the palettes are pretty good. I tried a lot of really good palettes this month. This is f another collaboration with the British Museum from ZC for their Alice in Wonderland palette. So this is the number one and A++++++++ for the packaging. This is some of the most beautiful packaging I've ever seen. It's just the color story doesn't really do it for me here. And with these Alice in Wonderland palettes, the two that I have, I've noticed some inconsistencies in the formula. For the most part, the palettes are nice, but it's just like some shadows are very pigmented and some are just washes and I feel like some of the mattes kind of blend away with this palette so you have to be extra careful with your application. That being said these aren't you know the most expensive palettes either so you got to know what you're working with and a couple of the textures like I don't like the glitter formula. Now Asian makeup they do like this you guys were telling me they'll put it like on the face and below the eye stuff like that uh, so it's just not my style of makeup. Not really in love with the color story either but it's a nice palette and it's very very pretty. Number 12 is the other Alice in Wonderland palette. This is number two from the British Museum and DC. Uh, this one was really fun. Again, I've noticed this one had more inconsistencies than the other Alice in Wonderland palette that I mentioned, but again, it's like not a bad palette. You can definitely make it work. The shimmers uh, are very pretty. There's some very unique textures in here that I don't find in American makeup a lot, but these aren't palettes that I feel like I'm going to reach for a lot, which is why they are ranking so low. I just feel like if you want to try ZC. They have so many other options that I would recommend over these. Now, that's not even true because, I mean, this packaging is everything and the quality of these are still good, but I do notice some inconsistencies that I'm not the biggest fan of. Number 11, I know it's unfortunate these are ranking low, but the two Tom Ford palettes that I tried this month were underwhelming to me just because I have some other Tom Ford palettes that I love so much more. But number 11 is Disco Dust. And again, I, from this point on, I've told you all of the palettes are good. This is a nice palette, but when I first applied it, I was a little bit underwhelmed by it. Like, these three shades, they're good. 
Uh, this shade is a standout that kind of makes the quad worth it, but this is an $80 quad, so I feel like all four shades should be able to be amazing on their own. And I don't want to discourage you from picking this up because getting Tom Ford... It's about the experience. It's about the name, let's be honest, all of that. You guys, I know, guys, I know. And Tom Ford does have a great formula, but this just isn't the greatest. And it's not that the quality on these are bad. They're just underwhelming. And I just had some palettes with color stories that I preferred more this month. Number 10 is the other Tom Ford quad that I tried this month. This one I do like more than Disco Dust, but it's just kind of like a... I mean, you see the colors here. It's just underwhelming. It's a color story thing. The quality on here is absolutely amazing, though. This is the shade Seuss Le Sable. Don't make fun of me on <laughs> the way that I pronounce that. Really gorgeous colors. Great for work. But it's not a palette that I'm excited to reach for because if I'm wearing makeup, you guys see, I go all out. I still like my neutrals and stuff, but I like... I want a little bit more than this palette gives me. So if this is a color story that you think you would like and you really love these understated kind of rosy hues, I really do think you'll like this. But again, this whole ranking thing is a preference thing. So it just, it seems wrong that I'm about to rank these ZC palettes and <laughs> some of these other palettes higher than Tom Ford because the price on these is just so skewed compared to the rest of the palettes I'm about to mention. But they didn't excite me. I have Tom Ford quads that really do excite me, and these ones didn't excite me. Number nine, yet another ZC palette. So this is the Scarab palette, and this one, if you like pinky hues, I love it. Now here's the thing with ZC palettes that I've noticed across the board. Some of the shades are so amazing, like better than some of my luxury products, but then there's gonna be a handful, like maybe one, two to three shades which aren't that great. However, I can justify this because these are relatively affordable. They're around the $30 mark. Anyways, the shimmers here, oof, they are so beautiful, you guys, and the mattes are very workable and easy to use as well. This is, this is a really good palette. I definitely recommend this one if you like more pinky colors. I wore this shade all over my lid the other day and I don't have a shimmer shade like this formula in my collection. I wish they would add more of these in their palettes because it is so pretty, you guys. Love this one. Number eight is the palette that I'm wearing right now. This is from Tarte. This is the Tartlet Juicy palette. And this color story is probably one of my favorite color stories in this whole video. Quality is good. Um, if you watched my e.l.f., no, what was it? Testing new and popular makeup. There was like a lot of e.l.f. and affordable makeup in here, but I used this palette. I did a pretty nice pinky look, and I really love the color story of this, but to me, it's just not a palette that excites me. The quality, I said, it's good, but I'm a snob when it comes to eyeshadow formulas. I don't know, I've just tried the best of the best, and this to me is very average. It's good for its price point, for sure. Today, I stuck in the more neutral colors. You know, I have these three in the crease, this to smoke out, this is my lid color, and then I also went in with the navy shade in the Urban Decay Wild West palette down here. It's not in reach, or I would grab for you, but I just have a navy shadow on my lower lash line, but I like this palette, but I don't love it. You know, there's other palettes that I tried this month that I legitimately felt excitement for, lit a fire within me, really inspired me. Uh, while I do love this color story and the quality is good, don't let my description sway you in any certain direction. It's just, I don't know, I thought the quality would be a bit better. I don't know. The quality is just like a big fat okay to me. Um, and again, I'm probably on the wrong side of this because so many people have loved this palette and talked about how amazing the quality is. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I'm wrong. <laughs> the next palette, we're going to go through a trend of ZC palettes again. We're back on it, but this is the Eye of Horus, Horus <gasps> palette. This one is a fun one, you guys. We have this fun blue, this fun blue pops of yellow and gold. This is a perfect mix of I like neutral colors, but I like to change it up a little bit. And oh, solid quality all around with this one. Really nice. The shimmers are so gorgeous. I love gold with blues. So everything about this palette really excites me. And the quality, again, it was very surprising. I just didn't expect the quality to be as good as they were. And this was just overall solid palette with great textures, great glitters in there, lots of dimension on the eyelid. Really recommend this one if you do purchase from ZC. Number seven, 
This is the... The names aren't on the back of these, so I have to pull them up on the website. Okay, this is the Geyer Anderson Cat Palette. And if you missed that video, the packaging is inspired by artwork and pieces that are in the British Museum. And this collection in particular of these square palettes are from their Egypt line. Anyways, mm, I'm gonna switch. I don't know why this one ranked so high. I, okay, let's rework this. I like the palette that I just showed you. I have Oris more. <laughs> so this is moving a space back. Anyways, this one has really pretty neutral colors, <laughs> earthy tones. So if you like earthy tones, you'll like this one a lot. I love this glitter in here. It's so pretty. Okay, this one definitely with quality is a little bit more inconsistent. This Eyes of Horus is a little bit higher quality if you ask me. But again, these are really pretty. Lots of textures in here. So this palette still is a high ranker for me, but looking at it now, I'm redoing it. I like Eyes of Horus better, but the Geyer Anderson cat, if you like uh, more earthy tones, you will like this. I just confused myself. Why did I do that? This is the last <laughs> ZC palette. I swear, I told you it was going to overtake this whole video. This is palette number five. This is the Ankh palette. And the reason why I like this, A-N-K-H, is because of the color story. Now, this was the palette that I was wearing in my video with ZC, and that look alone should tell you why. This is my absolute favorite palette of their whole line. There's so much texture and dimension in this palette. These crazy greens were so easy to work out. Just overall, a really great palette to work with. Something that inspires me to create looks that I don't normally create. And I, I really like this one. It's really pretty. All right, let's move on to number four. I finally, it's embarrassing it took me this long, but I finally dug into the Scott Barnes Glamazon palette. I don't think I have any looks to show you because I actually wore this in everyday life. Like just everyday looks. Um, I spent one evening creating a couple smoky eyes with this, really love the quality. And then from that point on, I just started wearing this as like everyday eyeshadow, kind of grabbing from the lighter colors here. But this is a pretty dreamy, cool toned palette. And Scott Barnes does have a very nice formula. I do think his palettes are a little bit overpriced. So definitely wait for a sale if you can. But very, very solid quality. You know, very pigmented mattes that blend out really easily and very pretty shimmer shades. Overall, this is such a well-rounded, cool tone palette. And I don't have a cool tone palette that has a layout quite like this, set of colors quite like this. I love the purple tones in here, but also you have really gray toned. I would like to see a bit more neutrals in here. I'm leaning more brown. Those are my favorite shades of cool tones, but these are really cool, cool tones. So this is a really great palette for a cool zone lover and I've had a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of interesting colors in here and this was just overall very well done palette. I think this is probably my favorite palette from Scott Barnes. I do want to create a few more looks to post on Instagram and stuff so I'm gonna have to leave this one out. Palette number three is going to be the ColourPop Limoncello palette. Oh my gosh this I was not expecting to love so much. It's really good quality from ColourPop and I just feel so comfortable with this color sorry it really is a palette that impressed me and this launch didn't get a lot of hype really because they come out with so much and that makes me sad I feel like ColourPop comes out with so many collections that the really really good ones don't get the hype that they deserve you know they need their moment and I wish this palette had more of a moment overall I mean the vibe of the collection this is one of my favorite collections truly that ColourPop has come out with and again it just it didn't get the attention it deserved and this palette is so pretty you guys if you like neutral colors but these have more summery punches to them we have some oranges yellows and greens and a fun pop of blue here it is a stunning palette it i need to use it more i'm upset i only got to use it like twice but i for some reason feel a heavy attachment to this palette it's stunning Moving on to number two, I initially wasn't going to rank this that high, but I even surprised myself with the looks that I created from this. So this is the Natasha Denona Circo Loco palette, and 
it's not a palette that I necessarily recommend. Um, it's really expensive because it's her big pans. It's what, like a hundred and thirty dollars? How much is, why am I blinking? It's over a hundred dollars. And the layout's a bit chaotic. That's one thing I don't like about it. And they're just not colors that I would use. But I did say in my review, if these are colors that you would use, that you would really like this palette because the quality is it's Natasha Denona quality, you know, it's top notch, the best of the best. She has that reputation for a reason, but it wasn't a color story that I felt really inspired by. You know, like I love the Scott Barnes Glamazon color story so much more, but the quality is so good and I've surprised myself with the looks that I've created. I've loved every look that I've come out with so far. Now, is this a palette that I want to reach for every day? No, but it's a palette that certainly does inspire me and a therapy to me is sitting down and creating a colorful makeup look that I wouldn't wear outside, but just being able to photograph it and share it with you guys and this has really given me that outlet. So. I wasn't expecting it to rank so high just because I didn't like the color story to start off with, but she does it again, Natasha, oh my. All right, it is time for my number one favorite palette that I tried this month. It's not an exciting palette, but I'm really excited for it because it is my makeup kit staple. So Vizzy Art came out with the Grande Pro 1X. It is an elevated version of their original Grande Pro 1 palette, the most used palette I've ever used because I use it in my makeup kit for brides. And I like this one because she, they added an extra row of colors. There were a couple colors that I'm missing that they did take out, but I did do a full review on this and a comparison of the old one. I even created a look with this, though I will say this palette isn't one that I would typically use for the whole look unless you really like matte looks. I, I like a nice shimmer, what can I say? But I'm just really excited about this. It's really fabulous quality. I know it's going to be so used, so loved, and so worth the money. If you are interested in it, Muse Beauty Pro is having a customer appreciation sale right now. I know, it's. I feel like it's an underwhelming number one favorite, but my heart is so happy that this came out and I absolutely love the quality of these and it's just going to be a staple matte palette in my collection. All right, you guys, there we have it. Those were all 14 palettes that I tried in the month of March. I hope you guys enjoyed it. What was your favorite palette that you tried this month? If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one. shiny right now. Like, why do I look so sweaty? Bye!